This is my grandfather. This is Arthur Leslie Wood Carter. He was with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment and he fought during World War I. Um, he was injured in France, I think in about 1915, and spent about the next, I think, five years in hospital following that. And this is my, this is my father's father. And this is his son, my father. This is Gerald Ralph Carter, also from Newfoundland, and he flew with the Royal Canadian Air Force during World War II. He, was, uh, he, flew, he, w he flew during 1944 and 1945 in England, and um, he remained with the Air Force until 1974. Um, this is my father-in-law, Earl Caves. He was uh, in World War II, and um, he made a career of the Army. He retired after 23 years of active service, and um, he stayed in the Army. Uh, he started out as an officer, and he made it to captain, and he stayed in the Army even after they rifted him back to an enlisted man. And when he retired, he was a Master Sergeant, and so he's a, a retired Captain Caves. And so, um, my uh, my husband is uh, also in the army, and so there's there's a tradition of service in our family. Um, my father is a retired marine, um, sergeant major, and our s oldest son is uh, also in the army. He's a captain, also serving in this theater. Uh, he's in uh, Kuwait right now. Uh, this person's picture is uh, Ed Dorsey. He's actually my father-in-law. And he's a tremendous American. He's part of the greatest generation. And uh, he was actually in Normandy during the invasion. So he uh, joined the Army in 1943 before Pearl Harbor and uh, was part of the Army Air Corps. He went over to Europe uh, in December and he talks a lot about how they were preparing for the big invasion of D-Day. My uh, father was also in the, in the Army from 1958 to 1960. So he did some work during the Cold War, and he was involved in classified documents. So he talks about uh, being involved in the classified material, which he couldn't talk about, of course. But he did mention that uh, he was on aircraft from uh, to Germany with uh, nuclear weapons and things like that. And so a you know, two-year stint for him. So it was really kind of wonderful. My father was very proud. Is obviously very proud of his military heritage. He was very proud of his father. Um, it was very important to him. My brother grew up uh, in air cadets and he joined the Air Force as well. It was never on my radar to join the military, although I was raised on Air Force bases all over Canada. And it was also always instilled in us that it was a very, a very, um, a very proud tradition to be part of uh, the Canadian military. Um, my father's very proud of me, but at the same time, it makes my father nervous that I'm here. He's like any father would be. He's nervous that his little girl is in harm's way. He's um, nervous that uh, I, he, he doesn't know day to day exactly that I'm okay. So I try to email him regularly and call him from time to time. I'm definitely extraordinarily proud and honored of what they did. I think they're proud of what I'm doing in probably a different way. Um, I can't define the context of how proud they are as far as my wife and my parents, but they do t tell me that, um, or at least they did when they were alive, so. It's very emotional. It's a very full circle sort of, sort of thing that my grandfather was in the Army and served during World War I. My father was in the Air Force, it was World War II, and here I am in the Navy in Afghanistan, and it's, um, it gives me a lot of strength. It gives me a lot of pride, both in my country and in my family, and I think it's, it's part of what, uh, keeps me strong, keeps me going every day. Uh, it's mission first, no matter what, and uh, I've got their example behind me. And uh, my father always knew that I would be interested in an operational environment. I spoke to him in 1991 during the first Gulf War and told him I wanted to volunteer, and I did. And I had his support then, so I feel that if he were still alive, like 20 years later, I would have his support to be here. So it means a lot to me. It gives me more a, a deeper feeling than it would actually if I were at home because you think about things like um, Flanders Field. You think about um, the real sacrifices that have been made uh, just last week. 
when you think about the the sacrifices that were made, um, World War One and 1776, and all through the years, and it um, it gives me a deeper sense of pride to be who I am, where I am, and all the years that I have served. Being here on Veterans Day to defend our country and honor our fallen heroes and the faithful and departed is, is quite an honor, actually. So knowing that we're here doing what we need to do and they were there many years ago during all the previous wars, is, it just adds a whole other level to this experience and uh, just even more of an honor to be here to uh, defend our interests and defend our country. It means more than just um, more than just we honor the flag, it's we honor every person who has died to keep that flag up on the pole. Every person who has gone before me so I can keep wearing this uniform. Um, it even means every woman who has gone before me so I have the right to be a woman in this uniform and to do all the things that I do. Being a veteran is a great honor.